you insist, welcome to the cave. This is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks. Well, I finally had the chance to say, all right, this is how you do pads. And how you do pads is like this. You got to think of it as an orchestral suite. Everybody asks me, you know, how do you make those pads sound so cool? What VSTs are you using? I'm not using anything. I'm, I'm just breaking things apart. That's what I'm doing. When you go to a classical concert, and you see how the seating arrangement is. You see that it has, you know, violas on one side, and it has cellos on one side, and it has the basses on the side. And it's very strategic on where they place those instruments so that they would ab be able to get the best sound possible from the auditorium to the listener's ear. So what you want to do here when you make pads, you kind of want to do the same thing. You want to put your violas on one side and your strings on another side and your synthesizers on a side and you want to break them all out. Put the left, on the, some on the left side, some on the right side. Put the reverb, EQ the reverb. I mean, there's a whole science behind this. you got to think of it as an orchestral suite. And that's what I want to show you. And I'm working on a new one today. It's very orchestral-like, but it's a lot of pads in it. And also, the, the other tip is I don't like to use stock plugins for my pads. I like to sample my own pads. And when I say that by that is like I'll get like an older keyboard that has been used in a while, like an Alesis Quadrasynth model. I really like those. They make really great pad sounds. You there's a lot of samples in them that you can use and you break them apart. I don't use like one patch. I'll take an element from each patch and I, and then I'll build from that. And you can see I have all these instruments are made from different keyboards where I combined them into the EXS24 and I built each one sampled each one you can see that I have you know some samples are 61 some are you know just depending on what model the instrument is that being said we're gonna build up and how we build it up is we got our base layer you always have to have the base and, and this is it's basically it's a sub bass but I, I added a little something to it so that it gives a little texture to it see I might put a little noise on the on the layer layer so I'll let you listen to it here it is just by itself here's the bass It makes it dizzy. So let's take off the EQ. And there's no effects. I don't put effects on my basses. Uh, you can really ruin your bass if you put effects on them. So don't do that. But I do put a limiter because I'm really amping it up a lot. Well, it's a, a, a very heavy bass. So I, I may not need it because I got it low. But there were some parts on it that got really heavy. So I, that's why I put a limiter. So you can see that I'm I have two LFOs, well one LFO, LFO2, but two different modulation sources. The you got a filter cutoff which is being mo modulated by LFO and it's going over every two bars. And I got the uh, drive, the filter drive. Yeah, it's it's modulating the filter drive. It's a really cool effect when you do both of these at the same time. And then I tweak my ADSR for for a pad because you always want a long attack and a longer release and a full sustain no decay and then I always make sure that this is engaged you know I just build this whole thing it evolves you got texture and so you you've already got just even that alone it sounds kinda cool so we'll just start with the synth strings first this is what this sounds like
So you hear that it's also evolving. Lots of movement. You don't when you make pads, you want you want movement. You don't want it in a way where it's not obvious either. You want it in a way where it's flowing, but in the same sense that it draws you in. It gives you interest to the sound. Because pads, normally, pads are boring. But when you make them interesting and you give movement to them, they're like, oh, wow, this is really cool. It sounds like a really neat ambient piece, and it's, it's given energy to it, you know? Something like that. So this is another thing I sampled. Combination of keyboards and stuff. And it's called synth strings, and it's really, in actuality, it's a very simple sound. It's just a a sol synth waveform. If we play it by itself, you can see all the samples. Yeah, when I sample stuff, I I don't play around. I I sample everything. Very simple sound. It's like a combination between a square wave and a saw wave. A little noise in it. So that's what's going on. So when you make these, you you got polyphonic. Make sure that's touched. Your voice count. Uh, I always set my voices to really high. Same thing again. I'm only modulating the filter cutoff with the envelope. And with the envelope, I'm just basically pushing that envelope in. I push the envelope. Yeah, that's right. I push the envelope in, but I push it in gently. <laughs> yeah, you got it. And also long attack, long release. Sample select and the velocity. That's kind of default when you get into some of these default instruments. But what that does is it's kind of like the harder you play, the more expressive or louder the sound gets. It, it kind of mimics like a piano. The harder you play, the, the louder it'll sound. So that's kind of like what the, and it's based on a velocity. And you got that jacked up. So I, I kind of put that in there. I always make sure that's in there. And usually when you open up a, a new EXS instrument, it's there. Let's go to the next one. So going into it, the uh, filter starts to open up and open up and open up, and that's what these settings here does when it's based on your filter cutoff. And I got my filter cutoff really low on this one, so it's just one of these things that generates this, like, oh man, you're in this big battle scene, and right at the very end of the battle, you're getting chased down, and you're getting shot up, and you stand up with your arms up in the air, and you're getting ready to fall down. So, yeah, something like that. <laughs> so we're building up that big scene right now giving that tension and that's what all this stuff does another thing to note reverb bus one is I'm using I try to match the reverbs with the type of pad like sometimes I'll use a reverb for each pad or I'll bus it out or whatever you know you want to make sure your reverb setting right here is all out and your dry is there's no dry if you bust it up. See, I have a nice vocal hall and it goes with my always. You know, because they're both vocals. I match them up and they sound better when you match like for like a uh, reverb that's set for like piano or a reverb that's set for like a concert hall. You usually want to set those for like, you know, concert like things. A vocal hall, I'm setting it for my aw, aw voices. <laughs> that's the summer one. Then we'll go to the aw waves. And what do we have set in on here? We have, oh, I don't have that set. I didn't set this one. Well, let's go ahead and set it. I'll show you how I do it. You just go in here and we'll make sure clear this one out. Envelope one. I don't put anything in here. Pitch. We're going to change the pitch out. I'm going to put filter cut off. And we're going to change. You know, I'm just going to give it a generous amount of attack. A little bit of decay. Some more f sustain. A lot of sustain. A lot of release. And then 
we'll take our cutoff down a little bit more, maybe put up the drive, something like that. And then the voices, we want to raise it. We got 32 voices, yeah, that's fine. And let's make sure we put this little tick mark up maybe halfway, make it not so noticeable. And let's see what it sounds like now. save our settings go in here options save settings to instrument it'll give you this crap to sit over right and it should be good to go sample select we're all there the other thing you know I'm recording at 48 I'm not doing 96 96 just will kill my computer I just can't have I mean I have an i7 laptop but I don't feel like it's necessary to run 96k but I do run it at 48 and I'll run it at 24 bit it's just I don't have the audio interface to actually do the the higher bit rates and in all actuality I just don't really feel like it's really that necessary for what I do now granted if I was doing some major orchestral piece you know and it was going to movie theaters then yeah whatever you know that's that's not what I'm doing I'm just doing shit for YouTube so you know what guys 48 is what you got <laughs> no no it's not like that I uh, I build templates uh, for other producers to buy one I package this up it actually packages up in this logic file as is so the other producer who buys it from me has the ability to set their own bitrate and change it if they wanted to. Everything is all MIDI. The samples and some of these things are recorded at high fidelity, 24 bit, 48K. So I think that's good enough. And the other thing we want to do is we want to make sure we put a limiter on our, kind of just a little bit, just kind of keep us from peeking out on our, our reverb. Let's go ahead and put an EQ on it. And I had this copied before and just kind of just lift it up a little bit over in the vocal range around here and that should be good for our EQ. Let's make sure the limiter goes after the EQ. There we go. And so that's for that one. And we could turn this guy down just a little bit. The la the last two is kind of my, my leads. This is where the orchestral stuff comes into play. I have this thing here called Cello Legato. And it comes with the default install of Logic. You know, if you don't have it, go to your download section and go sound library and and find it in there. It's I think it's in the um, legacy section. But I made some changes. The one thing I made sure is, is my fat and my on is engaged, filter cut off, drive, and my envelope. Doing the same thing, I'm just, how I tweak these things is I listen to it and I move them up and down until I feel like it sounds good. That's how I'm, I'm getting these values here. This is based on filter cutoff and I have just a little bit, something like that. And that's your lead. And how I'm doing my lead is I'm just doing fifths or octaves, something like that. It depends on, you know, how it's matching in the scale. We'll talk about this in a second. I'll play this one first.
you're creating instruments, you got to think of um, back to what I was talking about earlier about being in an orchestral concert. When you see like a bunch of cello players playing cellos together, do they take breaks and do they stop? No. Um, and when do they go to the next note? It's a it's a constant flow. And what I mean by that is they have a bow, and it goes two directions. You got your up bow and you got your down bow. And so and a lot of times what they'll do is they'll just string that bow from one note to the other note. And it's just a steady motion, back and forth, back and forth. It's, you can't really mimic a real player, but what you could do is, is you could put tricks in it. And my tricks are this. Long reverb, big sustain, a little bit more attack, maybe a little bit more decay, something like that. And then I'll play with the envelope. That's for the cellos. You know, reverb. I have a different reverb this time. I have a concert hall. Really good. I like this. I use it a lot. And I have an EQ after it. So the cellos are kind of like doing mid-range. And I have it EQ'd that way. Violas. 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 Viola. Viola me today. Yeah, whatever. Yay, I'm gonna cry now. And now let's take a look at the notes. I'll show you what I have here. And it's this big expanse of octaves, fifths, and I think I may have thirds, I can't remember. Yeah, thirds and fifths. And how do I get this? How do I get the notes here? Well, I played them out. That's another trick. I don't like to do loops, so I'll just play it out, I'll get on my keyboard here, and what I'll do is, you see my hands here? I will do full chords. What I mean by that is, like, I will do, I'll use every single note possible in octaves in each hand, and I'll play them out that way. I, I took, I started piano lessons when I was a little kid, so my hands can go, like, really far. I could probably do an eleventh if I really tried in these fingers because they, they could stretch out so far plus I have really big freaking Bigfoot hands you know yeah. oh. so I'm six foot two and my hands are really long or my fingers are really long so I could do really full chords it's really easy for me so as you play piano more and more you'll get used to doing chords and when I do them but my point here is play it out and you end up getting inspired, and next thing you notice, I'm doing a chord, and I'll change it up, and next thing you notice, I have this really cool chord. And then, and after I play it out, then I'll just kind of edit it in the MIDI, and just kind of move notes around until like, oh wow, this sounds kind of cool if I do it this way, or this sounds cool. And so that's what I did there. And then, very last, we have the ballad piano. I sampled this from one keyboard, very known for really good piano sounds. And but how I sampled it is I doubled it up. And if you go into your edit functions, you'll see that I have two groups. I have a pan right and a pan left. And basically what I did is in these groups, they're both exactly the same, but if you go over here in this section it says groups, you could see that I have a pan hard left and hard right. And it just gives it a really nice wider sound and a fuller sound at the same time. And that's really nice. Now, granted, what I should have done when I created the sample set is I should have re-recorded the left channel again. And what I mean by that is when you do a pan left and a pan right and you use the same sample, 
it's just only going to double it up. Even though you panned it out, it's still just not going to sound fully panned. Uh, I basically, I probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back in there and I'm going to offset the either the right or the left channel a little bit by like a couple milliseconds, so that way the waves the wave sample files are not in sync and they're not phasing out. Use a, a new recording because that way it's at least a little bit different or either that offset it. So that's what I gotta do. I gotta go back and offset it. But right now it's good enough. So I'll go ahead and just play the piano and, and you could be the judge if it's if I should if I should go back and do that or not. So here it is. Here's the piano by itself. The reverb. Oh yeah. On the piano I'm using this compressor. It's called the aggressive type U aggressive piano. I really like it. I don't really tweak that much. Maybe, really, I didn't really do anything. It's just a setting. And I have a channel EQ, same thing. Just picked a, this one is a really good EQ. It's channel grand piano EQ. It's in your settings. You just find it. And then I have a limit around the bottom and then some EQ. EQ is going to concert hall. And groovy with my piano and that's another thing I uh, another trick when you make your pads you know you want to just kind of get a little expressive uh, just kind of add more interest to it so we put this all together I have my automation set where my bass is kind of really loud and lower in one section and I lift up my lead strings higher at the break part very last thing you notice is I'm doing 3-4 and you're asking what the heck is 3-4 well it's a waltz pattern but I think it sounds really cool when you do pads in 3-4 I don't know why it's just something maybe something mathematical there's just something about it the 3-4 pattern just gives it a really nice feel and I have 100 BPMs so this is how you make pads you sample your own stuff, you play out your own stuff, you add movement, add expression for each piece, EQ each piece, break it out. You know, I got one, two, three, four, five, six. You know, I got my bass part, my mids. Um, I could probably pan this one a little bit to the right and pan this one a little bit to the left. Put this one in the center, but I don't know. We'll see how it goes. And then I got my leads over there. It's already panned enough. So we'll see. So, all that being said, remember, my friends, stay groovy. Yes.